Hello, uh, this is going to be a series of uh, what I hope to be a series of uh, videos uh, concerning some of the annoying, somewhat tedious, but ultimately necessary calculations that one does in a first mathematical statistics class, one that is calculus based. So in order to follow the video, you should know basic integration at like at a calculus one level. And there's nothing here that's gonna be original, but um, this is just to help students out. So let's get started. So the very, um, so we're sharing this and so the very, this is gonna be a very first one here. The um, normal distribution. And our goals will be to do the to do as follows. The first goal, which I think a lot of people do in calculus three, is to show that this integral here, minus infinity to infinity, e to the minus y minus mu squared over two sigma squared is in fact one, that this is a valid, and it doesn't look too much like a one, so I'll try to make that look a little bit more one-ish, but to show that that's equal to one here. Now, if you've seen this, um, you know, feel free to skip ahead to the next part where we'll do the, uh, uh, do the uh, moments and then do the moment generating function. But let's just work on this part right here. So the way we do one is we start and we calculate the following integral, minus infinity to infinity of e to the minus x squared dx. We wanna figure out what that is. Well, the standard, now there are, there is a different way uh, Professor Alberto Degardo came up with a, a volume of revolution method, very clever method that's in the college math journal, you know, several years ago, uh, I think around 2014 maybe. But um, I'm going to go ahead and give the standard calculus three proof of this. The way this usually works is what you do is you assign this, this integral here to be some value i. And then the thing you notice is that if you just do half the integral, that's going to be one half of i. So we're going to work on calculating this right here. Now, the typical thing that's done to do to uh, do the normal is you say, OK, this is with a dummy variable x. I'll just write another copy of this. And I'll multiply it by itself, but I'll use a different variable. So I'll choose y. OK. So this, of course, is going to be one quarter i squared, right? Now, because these are independent, we have x and y, uh, you can use a theorem from, from multivariable calculus that you can write this as a double integral. So you have e to the minus x squared times e to the minus y squared, and you can take this in any order you like. And I'll cease writing this in just a little bit. Now, using the properties of e, where if you multiply e to the a times e to the b, you just add the exponents, you get this. And now we switch to polar. In polar, we have x is r cosine theta, y is r sine theta, and the Jacobian gives the r dr d theta, or however you want to do it. So we know that x squared plus y squared. Now we do have to be a little bit careful with the limits here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to write the limits in the following way. Because 
where x goes from zero to infinity and y goes from zero to infinity, we're actually, and I should back this up a little bit before I write the intervals, just show you the region. If this is the y-axis, this is the x-axis, we're actually integrating over the entire quadrant one plane. Quarter plane. So in polar coordinates, the polar limits is, of course, r goes from infinity to zero. And your theta is a quarter of the circle. So theta is between 2 pi, ah, 2 pi, come on, pi over 2, pi over 2, and 0. So we get the following uh, following integral. And I'm going to put the r on the outside, 0 to infinity, theta, 0 to pi over 2. Then we have e to the minus r squared. This part right here becomes the r dr. Um, r dr d theta, r i d theta dr, going in this direction. And then what happens is that since the first integral is with respect to theta, this is just going to be r minus r squared. This is going to be just the integral of theta evaluated between 0 and pi over 2. So that's the integral from zero to infinity, r e to the minus r squared times pi over two. So the pi over two can come on the outside. And this integral right here is not a bad integral to do because this is now an easy u substitution with u equal r squared. So this turns out to be pi over 2, um, in this case, minus 1 half e to the minus r squared. Just take the derivative and you see that works. Evaluated between 0 and infinity. Now, I know you can't just, quote, plug in the infinity, but this really is a limit. I'm just going to avoid writing the limit down here. Taking the one half out, it's pi over four. And then using this to switch the limits, we have e to the minus zero squared minus, I know, I know this is a limit and the limit is zero. So we get pi over four. All right. But remember the pi over four was actually equal to our i squared over 4. So your i is equal to the square root of pi, the integral we're after. So what we get is we get this integral here. So far, so good. So now let's do the next one. So now that we know that, now let's just take a look at the, the Gaussian or the normal integral. And um, I'm not going to put the, const, the the coefficient part here. I'm just going to do the integral part. So let's just go ahead and integrate from minus infinity to infinity of e to the minus y minus mu squared over 2 sigma squared dy. And we're, we're, we're using this already. Square root of pi. We have that to use. All right, so now it's just a simple u substitution. And I want to stress, in, in, in this sort of calculation, we're going to be using substitutions a lot. We're going to be, you know, we're going to try to integrate as little as we actually can get away with. So. I just want to put this here as a basic principle. 
uh, integrate as little as we can. So following that principle here, I'm going to do a substitution. So I'm going to let u equal. Now, well, in fact, I should backtrack here. Before I set up my substitution, and it wasn't a waste of time because I could rewrite this integral here. And it's a little bit of algebra. It's e to the minus. Now let's make everything squared. So it's y minus mu, the square root of two sigma squared. And the reason I'm doing that is it makes it an easier use substitution. So now let u equal y minus mu over the square root of two sigma. Okay. Then du is equal to dy divided by the square root of two sigma, which means your dy is the square root of two sigma du. So when we substitute in here, this whole integral is going to be minus infinity to infinity. And I know the limits as, as uh, y goes goes to infinity, so does u. As y goes to negative infinity, so does u. We now have this square root of 2 sigma e to the minus u squared, the u. So you just write this like this. And this whole, this integral we already know. And there's our answer there. So then what we have for free is we now have our original integral. Here. Equals the square root of two by sigma. So it follows to get one, we just divide both sides by this quantity here. So that wasn't too much trouble. Um, yeah, I, I screwed this up. Yeah, that should be Right here, I should get rid of that square root of two here. That should be a two since I took it outside. There. So two sigma squared dy is one as required. All right. So that's part, part one. Now let's do part two. Direct calculation without using the moment generating function of E of Y. Now note, you could use the moment generating function, but I want to develop that in a separate calculation. So let's just calculate this thing directly. So the expectation of y is we just take our density function, integrate. Uh, now I'm going to put this in here deliberately, like so give myself some room. And okay, so we, we have that. And that's certain that's the definition of expectation. Now here's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to do this to set up a substitution interval. I want to just um, just select this right here. 
And I'm doing this to show you basically how cookie, um, well, uh, ah, the heck with it. I'll just write it down here. Now, I'm going to show you just how, how cookie cutter this is. I want to write this as 1 over the square root of 2 pi sigma put this y here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract mu from here. But to make up for that, I'm going to add this integral the mu and when I just when I subtract it off I'll add okay now here is the punchline let's look at the blue integral here now this blue integral what, what I want to do is I'm going to make the substitution, the sub, I'm going to sub this as x equal y minus mu, dx is just dy. So this first integral, and I'm going to just assume you can handle the limits because they're not that bad. This is the integral of x e to the minus x squared over 2 sigma squared dx. Then I'm going to add this. I'm going to take the mu out of this. This is 2 pi sigma minus infinity infinity e to the minus y minus mu squared 2 sigma squared dy. Now we're ready to, to finish this up. This is why I'm saying the general principle is you try to, to do as little as you can. Now, this thing right here, this is an integral of an odd function. On minus infinity to infinity, and it's convergent integral. because this is e to the minus x squared, so that overwhelms polynomial. So if you integrate an odd function, this right here is an even function, and multiplying by an x makes it an odd function. This interval, by definition, is 0. And if you don't believe, you just make a graph. So that little substitution does this. And on the other hand, this is an integral on minus infinity to infinity of a PDF. So the interval is one. So the whole thing turns out to be mu. Zero plus mu is mu. So that is the uh, mean calculation. Okay, that's not much to it. So now, um, let's do a different color here. This is part three. We want to calculate the va variance. And again, this is without moment generating function. Now, this calculation is not too bad because if you, the variance by definition, and here it's good to use the definition. You'll see why in a second. And I got my usual normalizing factor here. Now, this, this calculation here is best done by integration by parts. So now let's do 
integration by parts. And just as a reminder, I'll just write it sort of the computational way. So here, what you do is you let u equal y minus mu dv is going to be y minus mu. You see what's going to happen here, right? Now your du is easy. That's just the derivative of that, so it's just dy. Here's, a, here's where the fun starts, and this is where probably one of the few calculations you actually need to do. This extra y minus mu right here makes this a relatively straightforward antiderivative. The way to think about this without getting too formal about it, if you think about, if you let's say, let this be an x, this is really an x e to the minus x squared over, let's call that a here. So it's antiderivative is going to be, well, it's it's a uh, u substitution sort of thing. So what happens, in fact, I probably just should have, um, I'll be a little bit more formal about it because um, I realize that there's, a, there's quite a few things to keep track of. So I'll just be a little bit more formal in doing this antiderivative. And trust me, this isn't that bad right here. To do that antiderivative, what you do, well, I'll just write it this way. It's going to be the most general antiderivative of y minus mu e to the minus y minus mu squared over 2 sigma squared dy. And let, let's say, w equal, equal this. Then dw is 2 y minus u over 2 sigma squared um, dy. And notice how that cancels. The twos cancel. And so when you go to actually calculate this, to, you know, to solve for, for dy, we get sigma squared dw is going to be your dy. So then you've trans you've transformed this interval here into because here is your um, this y y minus mu dy is this part right here. That's going to be sigma squared e to the minus w dw sigma squared. And now we got a back substitute minus e to the okay, and then you don't need the plus c right here because you just need a single antiderivative when you're doing integration by parts. So now when we we substitute this back in, and I'll just I'll just put all this 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 jazz on the outside. So we now have your UV. So it's Y minus mu. Your V is this. Evaluate it between minus infinity and infinity. Minus a minus is a plus, and notice that's a constant. Over two sigma squared d uh, y. And now we're basically done because this part right here, this limits a lo by L'Hopital's rule and, I, and I'll just spare you that, but as we go to infinity, basically the e to the minus part uh, 
overwhelms this part right here. So this is zero by L'Hopital's. Okay, so what you get therefore is that the the expectation right here of y minus mu squared is equal to sigma squared. Now I know it's tempting to cancel the sigma, but I don't want to do that. You'll see why in a second. This is now a PDF right here. So we'll just box this in. This part right here, extend it a little bit. That's just all equal to one because it's a PDF. So we get therefore the variance equals sigma squared. So you see it was just an integration by parts. And a little bit annoying, but um, not the worst you can see, have at times. Okay. Now here's where the fun starts. This is part four. Moment generating function. And note the moment generating function can be used to derive higher moments. But I'm not going to actually, I'm just going to go ahead and just calculate the moment generating function here. Now here and, and here, um, this is going to be a lot of algebra. And the key algebraic trick, well, believe it or not, technique. It's nothing more than completing the square. If you can complete the square, you can do this. So let's calculate the moment generating function. So the moment generating function, m of t, is the expectation of e to the ty, is going to be the integral from minus infinity to infinity, e to the ty, e to the minus, in this case, it's y minus mu squared over two sigma squared dy. All right, now let's be, let's use a fact. I'm gonna keep this on the outside here, but um, let's use this fact right here. I'm gonna expand this a little bit. Multiplication of e to the a times e to the b, it's going to be e to the minus one over two sigma squared y minus mu squared plus ty. And all, everything we do from here on out is going to be focused on this right here. The goal will be to, to write this as a perfect square plus something. So we're going to be working with that. And what, how, how I think I'll approach it is, you know, this stuff here just comes along for the ride. What I want to do first is I want to use this 
minus the, I'm, I want to use that minus uh, one over two sigma squared in the following way. I want to write it like this minus two sigma squared. Then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to write this as y minus mu squared. And because I'm dividing by that, I'm also going to have to subtract two sigma squared ty. And just do a quick algebraic check because Again, this is really going to boil down to algebra. If you bring this in, these cancel, that becomes a ty. So this is correct. Now we're going to expand. So I'm going to write this as e to the minus one over two sigma squared multiplied by, now let's expand this, y squared minus two mu y plus mu squared minus two sigma squared t y, all right? And now here comes the key observation. We have something multiplied by a y here and something multiplied by a y here. The way you can do that, and they're both negative, it's one over two uh, square root of two pi. Expand that. E to the minus one over two sigma squared. Now let's just go ahead and write this as y squared minus two. Then we have a mu right here. And then we have a plus sigma squared t plus sigma squared t, the minus two is right there, times y plus mu squared. And here's where we do the complete the square. And you complete the square over everything in this little red box. And that's where that's where the energy is. The rest of it is just sort of writing what you already know down. Now let's do this in red. When you do this, you have a y squared minus two mu plus sigma squared t y. So you take this thing right here, divide it by two and square it. So dividing by two does that. So you write this at, t, at sigma squared t, my bad. All right, but because, because we added this squared, we better subtract it. And that's dy. All right. Now, believe it or not, we're very, very close to being done because by design, because we completed the square, in this red part, and this is not going to be of any consequence at all, really. This is going to be y minus mu plus sigma squared t squared, right? And so I'll go ahead and box this in in red here. Then I'll finish up this particular thing. 
Now let's expand this. So it's going to be plus mu squared minus, let's square this out, mu squared plus 2 mu sigma squared t plus sigma the fourth t squared. All right, all this is to the e. Now we're about ready to, to, to do what we need to do. We have e to the minus 1 over 2 sigma squared. We have the stuff in red. That's cool. And I'm going to go ahead and use e to the a plus b is going to be this. So I'm going to still have my minus 1 over 2 sigma squared. Um, I, I, I think I let my minus run into my fraction there. Now, look at what happens here. The mu, this is the subtract off, and I have a minus 2 mu sigma squared t plus sigma fourth t squared. Now, notice there's no y here. Okay. So the bottom line is that this whole thing, which I'm going to box in green, and that, that's sort of the, the interesting thing right here. That doesn't have a y in it. So I can take, there's no y, and this is a multiplicative factor. I can take this out. So when I do that, I'm going to write the result in green. Notice these two negatives can't these two negatives cancel. So I get E, the negatives cancel. I get two mu sigma squared T. Uh, that should look more like a sigma, I think. It didn't, so I'm going to make it look like one. Plus sigma 4 t squared over 2 sigma squared. So I have this. And then I have, um, OK, so I have that. So this is a multiplicative factor. Then I have this. sigma squared t, quantity squared. Now notice this is just the PDF of, of normal, where the mu, mu, the mean, is now this. So you're integrating a PDF over its range. This whole integral here is just one. So this whole integral turns into a one. Just a one. And then the, this, this particular thing here turns into E. So now notice we have a two sigma squared, two sigma squared. So it's E the mu T plus, that's going to be a sigma squared t squared over 2, which I believe, yep, uh, sigma squared t squared over 2 plus mu t, which is a moment generating function of t. So this concludes the annoying calculations. Thanks, so I'll stop it here and thanks for watching.